Some of you asked me, how do I play back a tour on Google Earth? So today we're going to take a look and show you how exactly to do that. The most important thing in playing back a tour is getting your settings correct. So first of all, let's open up Google Earth. And I happen to have a file right here on my desktop. Uh, that's not the file. Here it is. Uh, a friend of mine recently took a flight from San Francisco to Minneapolis and wanted to know what territory he flew over and hopefully he was looking out the window and would occasionally see what's familiar here. So we created the tour which is a .kmz file as you can see and if you have it on your desktop all you do is double click on that which will immediately open up Google Earth all by its little old lonesome. So hang on for a second and we will see that Google Earth is starting up and boom, there we go. And here it is. Now, because of some settings I had made previously, you only see uh, short red lines at both ends uh, of this particular flight. Uh, I could change the settings so that you would see one straight line over the area, but uh, we're not concerned with that. We're more concerned with the playback rather than seeing the entire route. All right, that said, uh, let's try the other route. If you already have your uh, flight path brought into Google Earth, which I do have right here, SFO to MSP. You notice this one says temporary places, MS. SFO to MSP. So we're going to quit Google Earth and I'll just hit Command Q and don't save this is basically what's asking. Do I want to save that? And I'm going to say no. And boom, Google Earth is quit. So now we're going to go back into Google Earth and try the other way of opening up the file and we'll wait for it to launch. And there we go. Okay, so as I said, I already had the file. I've just got to scroll down to find it. And here we go, SFO to MSP, or San Francisco to Minneapolis, St. Paul. So we'll double click on that, and that immediately brings up the whole flight. All right, so what's important here? The importance is the settings that you have in your preferences for playing this. So let's bring up the preferences in Google Earth Pro. And we're going to go directly over here to the touring area. Okay, so we'll click on that. And here's what I've got. First of all, this section here, not all that relevant. Uh, time between features, I don't have any. Weighted features, I don't have any. Fly along lines, yes. Okay, fly along this line to this line over here. I got San Jose because I wasn't sure which airport he initially flown out of. So I had, I had created a route for that as well. But we're dealing with the SFO or San Francisco airport. Anyhow, okay, right in here is the important stuff. Camera tilt angle 60 degrees. That gives you a good angle from altitude down to the ground as to what you're passing over. Uh, camera, camera range when you're flying that high. The camera range should be out there a ways. So I got 5,000 meters here. And that's what, 15,000 feet is the camera range. 15,000 feet ahead of the aircraft. Speed, speed really doesn't matter in this because we're really going to control the speed down here. Okay, and I've got speed at multiples of real time set at 10. Now, there's a good reason for doing that. If I fly it at the regular speed, it's going to take an hour and a half, two hours to cover the uh, 1,589 miles between San Francisco and uh, Minneapolis. Well, actually, we can speed that up a little here. Let's. Let's bring that up to uh, 8,000. Let's see what that does. 8,000, zero, 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 enter. So it held the 8,000, but I've, I'm speeding that up even more right here. Multiple, so however long it takes to, to go 1,600 miles, shall we call it, at 8,000 miles an hour, uh, I, I'm speeding it up much more so I can cut the 
observance time in watching this down to about nine minutes, I believe. Anyhow, those are the important settings right there. Let's click OK. And we have one last setting to do, and that is here. And we click, right click on the file, and we get info. And we go down here to altitude. And we want to set it to, in this case, I we're flying eastbound and eastbound as a pilot you have to fly at uh, odd altitudes westbound you fly at even altitudes so since google earth prefers metric system over uh, our imperial system uh, you got to enter it in meters so i picked the f uh, altitude of thirty-five thousand feet above sea level and that converts into 10,668 meters so you just have to do the math convert the two all right so anyhow make it absolute and 10,668 for 35,000 feet uh, you, you can set this to any altitude above the ground you wish just but you'll have to do the math to convert feet to meters and set that in there okay so now we click ok and now we can start our flight and we do that by going right down here to this button and if you notice if the arrow got out of the way it says play tour there we go play tour and i'll click and now we're going to start our tour all right and there we go we're already at thirty-five thousand feet the thing is you notice the highways and the towns and so forth and so forth here we're not marked until I paused it and let it fill that in. Now the problem is as the route proceeds these will disappear. So you're going to have to stop it in between each time if you want to see the actual highways we're crossing. So now I'm going to hit the space bar and it continues on and there we go. And you'll notice already the highways are running out. So let's hit the space bar and there they fill right back in and you can continue on your way okay so we'll get over the Altamont Pass out here in the East Bay Hills and we're coming into the Central Valley and we'll just hit the space bar again right there let it fill in hit it again to continue And now we're coming to the east side of the Central Valley and getting into the Sierra foothills. Let's spacebar again, let it fill in. There we go, hit spacebar to continue. There's Angel's Camp right at the foothills. And we're going up over the foothills of the Sierra. And you can watch down here, you can see the ground level right here. So ground level 5,000, we're quickly starting to ascend. But the aircraft stays at a flat 35,000 feet. Okay, we're at 7, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000 feet are the height of the peaks below us. Let's just space bar, see if we get any highways. Well, yeah, we get US 395. We're now on the eastern slope of uh, the Sierra, and here... Is, is the state line. This gray and white line is the uh, state line between California over here and Nevada up here. So we hit the space bar again, let it continue. We'll cross over into Nevada. And things are proceeding fairly quickly, as you can see. All right, so I'm just going to hit the space bar to stop it again. And we're only a minute and 31 seconds we're over nevada so that's pretty cool i mean if you want to play it in real time be my guest but i mean you'd be sitting there for like i said uh, a th three hour flight but let's see how long this whole flight is well it's 12 minutes 12 minutes when we get to uh, uh minneapolis st paul and of course you're seeing it over st paul instead of minneapolis let's back up whoops all right, here we go. 
And right there, that's the Minneapolis airport down there. And the reason it goes past, it actually does stop directly over top of the Minneapolis-St. Paul airport. Well, what happens is that we've got our camera set at a 60-degree angle, so it's looking out this way, and that's why you're, when it stops, because it's stopping directly here, what you're seeing is the uh, St. Paul airport, which is right over in here all right that pretty much wraps it up hope you uh, if you have any questions write them down below and we'll try to address them for you but that is how you do a playback of a tour in google earth <laughs>